Hello, everybody. Welcome back to 15 Minutes. Today, I have with me Sergio Angeles, who is the executive director of Longmont Public Media, or LPM, as you'll probably hear it called in this interview. And we're here today to talk about LPM's contributions to our community and what public amenities like LPM really do for Longmont. Sergio, how are you today? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me on, on 15 Minutes, Marsha. I really oh, appreciate it. You're welcome. Can you tell everybody a little bit about what Longmont Public Media is? Sure, absolutely. Here's the, uh, the short pitch. So Longmont Public Media is a media makerspace and a content incubator. So we run a facility in downtown Longmont full of studios, podcast rooms, video equipment, video editing rooms, live streaming, audio production studios for people to come in, learn about media, create media, and then we assist them in distributing that media on public access channels over the internet, on Roku, Fire TV, anywhere in the world, uh, you can watch content being produced by local content creators. Wow, so, uh, you know, I have heard technology incubators and startup incubators. I've never heard of a content incubator before. Yeah. Do you know what that, can you tell me what that means? I do, yeah. So it's more of a recent phenomenon due to, you know, platforms like TikTok, Spotify, um, platforms that allow uh, content creators to distribute content. Mm -hmm. So what they've done is created a platform to help encourage individuals to create more content. So mm -hmm. I like to think of uh, me, uh, Lama Public Media as a content incubator. It's a place for people to um, learn about content, um, learn how to create that content, come up with ideas, uh, mm -hmm. brainstorm with other individuals, which is part of the community around town, um, and then just experiment. And it's really part of the funnel, in my opinion, of um, you know creating content and then doing it and then distributing it. So. Can anybody come and, and do this? What uh, Do yeah. you have to pay for it? What's the story? No, so uh, we're a 501c3 nonprofit. So we're open to the public uh, nine to five, Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. So anyone can come in, they can reserve a studio, they can reserve a computer, they can reserve a live streaming machine and equipment to use uh, absolutely for free. Uh, we do have some paid memberships starting at 50 bucks all the way to $100. Uh, and that's so you can get additional perks. So you can get 24-7 access, free equipment rentals. You can get uh, discounts on classes. Mm -hmm. um, and again, really just a way to support your local media makerspace um, so it can be here past, past me and for my children and other people's children as well. Yeah. So not unlike um, public television or public radio, except that you get to be much more hands-on. Correct. Yes. Yeah. So here you actually get to learn about how do you produce that type of media, either photography, it can be video, live streaming, audio. Mm -hmm. um, we'll teach you. We have other members and community members who love doing this. Um, and we really just create a community place for people that come together uh, to help make stuff happen and, and help create that content locally. Yeah. I'll have to admit that I'm a fan of Longmont Public Media and, and kind of help to, I hang out, but I don't help much. Um, That's not I, true at all. Well, this, this is some content now, right? I mean, well, this yeah, is something we're, that we're, we're creating content right. now, but in terms of the technology, I, I, I sort of, sort of um, uh, con other, uh, other people into doing all the tech work. Um, and well, I just talk. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, that's part of the makerspace though, right? Is, yeah. is uh, a plaza, so to speak, of of individuals with different types of skills and you mesh them together or, you know, mash them up together and say, mm -hmm. hey, let's let's create something. So in this yes. case, right? I mean, uh, if you don't have a certain skill, you know, we can bring in people to, to help. And mm -hmm. I think we have a really great community in, in Longmont of, of content creators and filmmakers that want to help other individuals create that content. We do. I, I think that one of the best things about LPM is that there are so many different interesting people from different walks of life mm -hmm. who come here. So it's not all guys from the AV club in high school right. or anything like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's a lot of people are, uh, you know, we have one very professional photographer. Yep. Um, we have um, an art videographer who's 
just recently started coming, I think, right. and, and is, is fascinating yeah. in terms of, of uh, you, you guys, when you're watching this, you can figure out who we are, and who you are, you'll know. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really a way for people to meet each other and uh, maybe meet people that they wouldn't meet any, anywhere else. Right, yeah. Um, and I think talking about um, what you had started off the show with, talking about like public amenities, um, one of the public amenities I find very important in cities are plazas, right? It's, it's mm -hmm. just an open place for people to just meet other people, sit, read, whatever you want to do, right? Yeah. So I kind of view LPM as a, another type of community plaza, mm -hmm. more just enclosed, maybe more focused towards a specific subject, but still, you know, uh, an amenity that is available for individuals, uh, people who already know how to do any type of media production or those mm -hmm. that don't. Um, and I think it's just incredibly important for, for a city to have. I think so, too. Um, Longmont is, I think, at least the way I see it, is in a process of transitioning. Um, you know, 15 years ago, we were a farm town. Yeah. And then in the uh, 90s and aughts, we grew up into a suburb. And now we've sort of filled the available suburban space and we're gonna to have to grow up again into a more dense urban environment if we're going to continue to develop our economy and continue to be a, a really pleasant place to live. Right. <coughs> Excuse me, and I think Longmont Public Media is a big contributor to making this a pleasant place to live. Yeah, I, I mean, I would say I'm partially biased since I co-founded and. I, I run LPM, but I would I would agree with that sentiment. Mm -hmm. um, I would also say I think there's a variety of other public amenities, right, created by the local government, mm -hmm. um, as well as other I would I would say private amenities, but mm -hmm. mostly just I use that word simply because they're owned or started by someone else, but still available for you know the community to use, right? You have Tinker Mill, which is another type of makerspace, mm -hmm. uh, more focused on you know more hands-on kilns and. 3D printers and all that kind of stuff. I mean, you also have you know bars and restaurants and uh, Union Reservoir, and then you have some more natural resource uh, amenities, mm -hmm. right? Like um, the greenways, the greenways, the trails. Which, sure. Yeah. So yeah, and actually that that's one of the more recent, I think, public amenities the, on the St. Frank Greenway, mm -hmm. um, and people can go tubing. And I'm a frequent user of that, and I think that's just excellent. <laughs> um, I bet. And I, and I think we should have more of those type of, you know, both public and private amenities to encourage more people to, to go out and about and just make Lamont an even better place to live. Well, I, I hope so. Um, I think that it's, it's one of the things that's really necessary as the urban environment goes denser and we start more of us live in townhouses and apartments rather than right. you know a, a suburban form factor where the streets are wide and winding and and all the houses have big old yards and the thing is we're out of land yeah and and so um public and private amenities are one of the things that makes it good and pleasant for us to all live close together right yeah i actually live on the east side of longmont um, and right by where I live in a, in a condo, and right by where I live, uh, there's two empty fields, one that says future school, future park. And from what I know, it's just been empty for years. And whenever I walk by there, I always just think of, hey, maybe we could build something else here because there's nothing else by where I live. I can mm -hmm. walk to Walmart over on 119 in Kemp Pratt, mm -hmm. or I can walk to Pace and 17th, but that's really it. There's nothing really else nearby. And yeah, mm -hmm. I'm thinking more of, you know, maybe restaurants or bars, but maybe it's a community garden. Maybe um, maybe it's a smaller makerspace. Maybe it's a, mm -hmm. a branch of a library, um, right? Just, just something else to help encourage, you know, our local neighborhood to just get out, meet new people. Um, you know, again, that plaza feel um, to help make Lama better. Yeah, that's just really interesting. That future park was actually slated to be finished in uh, 2015. Oh, I did not know that. And uh, what happened, if you're new to Longmont, you may not be aware that in 2013, we had a massive flood. And a lot of our outdoor amenities 
were taken out by the flood because, you know, we have the left hand creek and the St. Vrain River mm -hmm. flowing through the city. And uh, all of that, especially on the south side, the high waters came and washed out a lot of that stuff. Um, and so resources for the city that would have been finishing the, the parks on mm -hmm. the periphery uh, got diverted into rebuilding things that were destroyed by the flood. You know, a mobile home park was completely mm -hmm. taken out and washed away uh, mm -hmm. by that flood. And the city really had to scramble to rehouse uh, all the people whose homes were destroyed. Uh, so here we are yeah. in almost a decade later, and the future park is still in the future. Maybe it should be a future plaza. Maybe. Instead. Yeah. Um, although the kids that, that ride dirt bikes. Oh, I don't see them anymore. <laughs> there. And maybe they all grew yeah. up. You know, <laughs> maybe. The, the, the first year I was on the city council, they, they did that, yeah. you know, they built all those dirt hills and stuff themselves. And they were all, you know, 14, 15 maybe. So yeah, maybe mm. they all grew up and went to uh, college and got jobs or yeah. something and they don't do that anymore. <laughs> That's kind of sad. Yeah, um, huh. But yeah. So the place that Longmont Public Media is located yeah. Is in the da is downtown Correct. downtown Longmont in in the Longmont Creative District, which means that there is um, a little tax support, Correct. a tiny bit of tax support, for um, uh, supporting things that are involved with the arts, mm -hmm. and um, that tends to make downtown areas more interesting. Right. So what are some of the things you can think of that uh, LPM can participate in because they happen downtown? I mean, really all sorts of, you know, downtown events. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we host a uh, couple concerts every month, one of them which is Sampo Sessions. So it, we turn mm -hmm. the studio into an intimate concert venue uh, that's run by Tim Goldsrud, who's simply incredible and in just bringing more people outside to experience you know, arts. Mm -hmm. um, of course, you know, LPM is used for uh, recording those events mm -hmm. and helping distribute um, that content uh, to other people in case it can't make it downtown. Sure. Hey, you know, there's another way to, to catch up on, on what happened. Um, so, yeah, I think LPM is very integral in, in all of that. Yeah, there's, there's, uh, there's, there's this idea that I'm still part of everything, even if I couldn't get downtown. Correct which is, is really nice. Yeah. You know, you can see LPM on Facebook and yep. all, all that. Um, there's another aspect, which is sort of the civic engagement of, of the thing. Can you explain what Longmont's relationship is with the city and, the, and publicizing the, the uh, operations of the city of Longmont? Sure. Yeah, so uh, part of what Longmont Public Media does as well is uh, obviously broadcasting, recording all city council meetings, mm -hmm. uh, boards and commission meetings, uh, which ties back into uh, Longmont Public Media being a source of information um, in, in distributing right, that information. Mm -hmm. um, so we really try to make it uh, all that content as accessible as possible. So when we do record a city council meeting, it goes on Facebook, it goes on YouTube, it goes on video on demand. Uh, and more recently, we started putting it, putting them up as podcasts. And surprisingly, uh, we have a lot of people that just listen to it um, in audio form, right? They don't mm -hmm. want to just have to be there in front of a, a TV or maybe in person. Um, they want to be able to listen to it, digest it in their own time. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what people are used to doing now. Sure. Um, so I really do like to, I, I believe that we're pretty integral in distributing some of the information uh, from the city um, as much as, you know, we can help out with that. You know, I have lived a lot of places, and uh, Longwon is honestly the first place that I've seen this much civic engagement. Uh, a lot of people, including me, I have to say guilty, guilty, guilty. You know, I didn't know how... Um, the offerings of, of, of the city of St. Louis mm -hmm. worked. Um, and 
I'm not sure I ever voted in municipal elections. You know, shame on me. <laughs> um, but, it, you know, it, it really is wonderful how much people know about what's going on. Yeah. Um, well, I think part of that is low, lowering the barrier to entry, right, is, mm -hmm. and making it accessible to, to everyone. That's um, right. And that's part of also what we do. So. Yeah, and even, even during the pandemic, we... Uh, you, I should say, yeah. uh, really did a lot toward enabling people to not only still watch the council meetings, but to st still be able to address the council. Right. Um, you know, that was a, a shared responsibility. Correct. Yeah. But, wow, you know, the, the, that's quite a, a range of, of activities. We should mention class, classes, and sure. then I think we're going to run out sure. of time. Yeah, so again, since, since we're a makerspace, uh, part of, uh, and part of our mission is to educate individuals on, on media creation. Mm -hmm. So we do have a variety of different classes ranging from video production, photography, how to print prints in our printers. Uh, we're working on classes on audio production. Um, and really, any type of equipment that we have there, we, we teach individuals on how to do that. We also teach mm -hmm. on live streaming. So really, trying to just encompass the whole breadth of what you can do from a media perspective. Because um, again, we want to power individuals um, to, to create and then distribute that content. Sure. And, you know, I think what I would like to say is everybody come on down. Yeah. Because and, and Absolutely. make sure that at the time you have more than fifteen minutes, <laughs> because you can spend a lot of time. Oh, absolutely! Yeah. yeah. If any of you watching are interested in media production or learning about media, maybe it's a TikTok video or uh, learning about how to live stream, or maybe it's a, a video for your business or photography or audio. Just come on down. Uh, we love to help you out and, yeah. and see you there. Okay. Well, thanks, Sergio. This has been really interesting, and thank you for your contribution to amenitizing Longmont. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm honored to be doing that, so thank you. You're welcome.